Don, even as you talk about it being very important, what are some of the key new trends that are there in the tech world that even Africa can adopt? Uh, I think, first of all, you, you know, if you look at health, yeah. you know, we're all talking about health right now. So health and technology. Because of the current pandemic? <laughs> COVID. <laughs> so uh -huh. health and technology have merged. Um, if you look at um, the FMCG industry, again, the same thing. We, where there's a number of technologies that allow people to solve problems. We use it. We are leapfrogging the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. All right, John, earlier on you had mentioned that, uh, which, which, I mean, which have, has probably changed my perspective and even for the viewers that are watching that for Africa, we are coming on a bit faster compared to European countries. Maybe you can just break it down for us and make us understand how so. Okay, so if you think about, um, let, let's, let's stay on the health sector, right. which is an important topic. Um, we're, we're seeing how Africans are beginning to use technology to even solve remote health issues. Uh, we're seeing USSD platforms that are solving health problems. We're seeing SMS platforms that are solving health problems. In Europe, that doesn't exist. Oh, okay. I mean, people don't even know about, you know, um, this level of how you solve, you know, telehealth problems using very, very minute micro forms of technology. So that is, and if you also look at how we've also begin to interact between various sectors and the relationship between those sectors so from from fintech which obviously africa has become a major sec driver yeah. of to how that ties back into micro insurance for example again we're creating new products that the world has never seen before but it's all because of the access of technology mm -hmm. to that individual so we're able to get to the common menanji in the village now because whereas you know we can't build all those infrastructures for him but we can connect with him mm -hmm. via the kind of person that you are. Yes. All right. Now, you are also actively involved in new technologies such as IoT, artificial intelligence, blockchain. Tell us more about that. What is it? What does it all entail? So uh, I think um, one of the things about you new smart technologies is how do you use it in real life use cases? And so I got involved in AI a long time ago because I saw the need for how to manage data. Mm -hmm. And data is a very important part of our life today. Uh, but understanding the value of that data, how to manage it, how to mine it, and how to use it to create better services and use cases for us. So I give you an example here yes. in health right now. You know, we built a platform which is basically um, using a lot of AI solutions to mine data around health mm -hmm. and then create um, what we call a smarter contact tracing solution. Mm -hmm for us here in Africa to be able to look at the social dynamic and social cultural issues yes. that we have to then say, can we create a contact tracing or man management solution for vulnerable people that is a little bit more in line with our culture? Mm -hmm. But again, using machine learning, very basic machine learning tools to do that. And, and the same thing with blockchain. So I think smart technologies itself cannot live without real life use cases. Um, you know, a lot of buzzwords around smart technologies, but you do need to find the relationship that it has with a real life solution before you can actually say what is the value of smart technology in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that is regards to also the new app that you've created, the contact tracing app. Yes. Or, or Welcome back. We continue with the show. I'm still with John, Ka with, with John Kamara, a tech entrepreneur, and he's talking to, up to us about technology in solving socioeconomic challenges. Now, John, before we went on break, we had earlier on touched a bit about the contact tracing app. Maybe, maybe you can just explain to us in brief, how exactly does it work? How do I get to know, you know, the places where it's hotbed disease, places where there's pr probably not disease at all? Perfect. Thank you very much. I mean, very quickly, what we decided to do was think very logically. To manage any disease, you need to sequence the symptoms, not the human being. Okay. And sequencing the symptoms also means symptoms live in locations. If I sneeze, the symptom lives here, even when I move on. Mm -hmm. So that's where we started our thought processes from. So again, accuracy of data means when the health workers are collecting data, we give them a platform where they can automatically digitize all that information. And as they digitize all the information, so the government, the hospital, the county can sit there and see where all the test cases are in the county in one full view on a beautiful map. And then from there, as the cases get you know, moved from regular tests to positive cases, they can now see where, again, the location of the positive people. Now, if I have the app, now a government or a county or hospital can create what we call a high-risk location because we do red, yellow, and green. Um, green. So a right high risk location being red based on specific parameters around how many people are tested, you know, different types of things. Now you walk in with your app and the government has created a geofence, what we call a virtual ring. 
you don't know that is a virtual ring. Once you hit the virtual ring, your app goes off and tells you that, hey, you've just entered an extreme um, high-risk location. You must be careful. You must socially distance. So again, it consistently reminds your mind of all those things that you're doing. So what happens is you're now conscious that Westland is a high-risk location wow. because your app just goes off. Because it's a so virtual ring. It shows ring. you areas just, that are high risk. It's a virtual ring. Areas ring. that it you just, need to avoid. You don't even know. Yeah. Okay. So, but when you leave, we now follow you. We cluster you into yellow. You're now a potential risk. So everywhere else you go, we also look at those locations, and also the organizations can map out those locations. Mm -hmm. Now everybody else you meet, we can follow those people. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is the places you go to as well. Even when they extract you from the population, or we look at the people that you've met, those are very basic stuff. But every location you've been to, we can continue to sequence new symptoms and re-quarantine those locations. Wow, and I think the question that is in my mind, and even the question of any viewer that is watching, is that if, if there's an app that can actually tell me areas that are high risk, then how can I get access to this app? Yeah, it's Afia Record. All right. So, so just we, go are, to we, are, we tested it yesterday okay. um, with uh, one of the um, counties we're present to, and I was quite happy to say they were super they were extremely surprised. Yeah. And they actually said, why haven't you tried that in America? That was the uh, conversation. Again, so, again <laughs> we can build technology from here yeah. that can solve problems anywhere else in the world. And this was built here in Kenya by young Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And I think that just brings that brings me back to that conversation which you're having earlier on, whereby we don't always have to wait for the West to build things for us, to innovate things for us. We as Africans and even as young people, we can do those things by ourselves. No, we can. Because if you think about it, here in Africa, I if I have an app that tells me you have COVID, yeah. there's a whole social cultural issue there because we, we're different types of people. In the West, it might work. You know, somebody's okay to say you've got COVID and, you know, somebody, but here, you know, you might get lynched. Yeah. People might beat you up in villages, you know, and they don't, you. you know, they, they kill you. Yeah. So why would you, so we think, you know, rather than do that, we can still achieve the same purpose in a much clever way and even export this form of technology to peop everybody else around the world. Say, you know, this is a lot better way to also maintain someone's privacy. Yeah, exactly. While you're still managing, but more importantly, you're managing locations as well. So you manage locations, you manage symptoms, individual, and you also track everybody else they've been with. I mean, and, and the last part, which is interesting, we also took the, the COVID pass that the government has made, we've digitized it. Mm -hmm. So now border control officers can actually scan it and figure out if it's actually valid or not. Wow. So, uh, you know, if I'm going from Nairobi to Moranga, you know, those police there, they don't, they can just scan my pass. And that's and it. And he pulls it from the database. And that's it. You and don't have it. to, like, uh, produce physical documents. No, you don't. Or just give them your ID code if you, have a, if you don't have a smartphone. They can just run it and you get an alert as well that somebody has scanned you. Just like so that? So that they don't tell you that, hey, you know, it's not working. <laughs> I think this is just really